This program contains adult content. Is there a God? A uh, big atheist. Really? What, am I an idiot? Come on. That yes, it would be nice if you could throw your sins and your responsibilities on someone else. But it's not true. It looks like far left lunacy. I don't believe that it's true. That religion is moral or ethical. You don't need to follow anybody. It's not human intelligence. If someone doesn't value logical consistency, what logical argument are you going to give them that will demonstrate that they should? Hello and welcome to the Godless Revolution. Today is Sunday, September 15th. This is episode 265. I'm your host, Dan Ellis, one of the hosts. And Matt's here. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I'm, am I one of the hosts? You are one of the hosts as well. Woohoo. Ryan is not here. He's at an event. I don't know what event it is. But he couldn't weasel out of it. Yeah. He tried. So he says, Mm -hmm. maybe just didn't try very hard. Probably having a lot of fun doing something fun with fun things. I'm going to wipe his mic on my ass. (laughs) Have fun with that, Ryan. (laughs) He'll come in next week. Why does my, you guys' microphone smell bad? (laughs) Mine mine smells bad. (laughs) That's hilarious. I hadn't thought about doing that, but we just might. So maybe you shouldn't miss any more shows, Ryan. <laughs> uh, so what's new with you, man? <laughs> oh, not much. My mom's doing better. So in case anyone was wondering, but, uh, good, good. I did hear a thing over the week that I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was a story about the Pope and an atheist in a room together. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, is this supposedly a true story? No, or no, 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 a... no, no, no. Oh, okay. It's, like more of a joke kind of a thing. Okay. And uh the Pope says to the atheist that he feels bad for him because it's kind of it's kind of like being in a dark room looking for a black cat that isn't even there. Mm-hmm. And the atheist says Well that's interesting because that's exactly how I see you. And the Pope says, What do you mean? He's like, Well I I think of you as being in a dark room looking for a black cat that isn't there the only difference is you've found it yeah yeah i've heard i've heard and i don't know where it comes from but yeah i i could swear that that comes from a debate that i've seen but i couldn't tell you exactly what it is i'll bet if we did some googling we could find it Mm -hmm. but maybe we'll do that later but yeah that is that's a great analogy though Mm -hmm. i I like that one i like how it turns it at the end too yeah like yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. We're the you same, the same except way. you're a fucking moron. <laughs> yeah. A crazy you're the one person. claiming to have se- yeah. to to say that you actually have it. Yeah. When it doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. That'll that 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 I think that comes from a debate. That reminds me that uh again we I I do have a a debate. Jesus Christ! I'm tripping all over <laughs> my own tongue, man. Uh Oh. We have <laughs> that'll work great during the debate I have scheduled. <laughs> we have a debate scheduled on October third. It'll be. Myself and Dr. Clark, Dr. Gregory Clark, who has been on the show before, uh, against a couple theists. And one of them is, is a doctor. He is a doctor of divinity or something like that from an so unaccredited. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I did some Googling and previously we, went, we mentioned that, oh, he's a doctor. Well, what is he a doctor of? And so I did some Googling and found out that I believe it's Dr. James White. Mm-hmm. He he has a doctorate from an unaccredited, I believe, online school in theological studies. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I'm sure he he knows some about religion, but I I cringe at calling somebody a doctor who got their doctorate in some religious study from an yeah. online unaccredited school. Yeah, the University of Kent Hovind. Yeah. yeah, the University of how much can you pay us to give you a doctorate degree. Right, right. And I I also noted that he has since was either planning to or has started work on an on a real degree. But uh-huh. uh I I haven't I haven't Googled a whole lot onto it. I just saw that and thought Oh, well, that confirms what I thought before, so I'm going to stop there. No, I I ran out of time, but mm. it did confirm what I had previously suspected, that it was some religious degree that, that provided with him with his doctorate. And, yeah, so 
that should be fun. Uh, I'm trying to, st- I'm still trying to set up a meeting with Dr. Clark so that he and I can go over strategy and notes and planning and all of that kind of stuff, which should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Um, that should be a good time. It will be at the University of Utah, uh, behavioral health, behavioral social something studies center. I should have all this information in front of me and I don't. I apologize. I will publish it in the show notes and, uh, put up a link in the Godless Revolution Facebook page for anybody who would like to be there who is here locally or for those of you who would like to travel in. I will also work on making sure that it is recorded either in audio or video or both and so that we can release it as part of a show. That should be fun. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We also, God, over the last week, I did a whole lot. We had new doors installed that are fucking awesome. I love them. Um, they are cool. They're so much better than what we had. Uh, I had my stitches taken out of my head. Uh, I don't know if you've, I don't think I've ever worn a hat in the studio before. I'm yeah. wearing a hat today because I have a giant hole in my head. I had my stitches out, and when I had my stitches out, I think they probably weren't ready to be taken out. Mm. I got a call kind of last minute reminding me, apparently, that I had an appointment at my dermatologist. And I'm there so often that I never know if it's for, like, uh, new round of biopsies that they're going to take, if it's to be taking out stitches that I've already got somewhere on my body, if it's to discuss some other treatment. There's, there's, I'm, I'm at my dermatologist's office quite a bit. And so when I got a call initially reminding me of an appointment, I thought it was just my regular checkup because I didn't have anything on my calendar for that day. So I just threw it on my calendar, traveled to the doctor's office, got there and I arrived an hour early. Because in my confusion about everything, because I was working that day, I put it on my calendar for noon, and that was basically when I should have left the house rather than when my appointment actually was. Mm. Anyway, I got there early, so there was really n- only one person and only a few people in the office. There was the front desk receptionist person, and then they had a MA in the back. I told them that I was there for my appointment realized after she explained it to me that I was there an hour early and I was like, okay, well I can come back or whatever. And she's like, oh no, we've got somebody here that can do it. So put me in a room with the MA. She started taking out my stitches and I could tell she was a little concerned. And then she, then she said, you're going to want to keep this moist. It is closed, but you need to be really careful with it. Um, you know, it's not bleeding a lot, blah, blah, blah. You want to keep it moist, keep a bandage on it, change it regularly, let us know if you have any problems. So she does all of that. I went golfing afterward, and then I came home and was just talking to Tracy, told her that I'd had my stitches out, and she's like, oh, let me see. So I took my hat off, took the bandage off. Well, the bandage was pretty much falling off anyway because they're trying to put it on hair, and mm. that doesn't work very well. And Well, sort of. Tracy's reaction sort of was, hair. yeah, <laughs> sort of hair. There's, <laughs> there's some sparse bits there. Um, but Tracy, Tracy's reaction was something like, Oh my God. And I said, what? And she's like, it does not look good. And so, uh, she took a picture and showed it to me on her phone. And I have a big hole in my head. Apparently when she took the stitches out, it was too early and the wound separated mm. and it was just like barely formed skin or scar tissue underneath there that was kind of like cream colored and Mm. it was a little oozy it did not look good it looked pretty fucking bad and so i've just been keeping a bandage on it since then and how big are we talking um can you get a finger in there you could probably put your 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 i could probably put my pinky in there really yeah gross yeah tip of my pinky i could i could fit it yeah i know i could fit the tip of my pinky in there um jeez I'll have to show you to you when we finish up the show. I should have showed you before we started mm. recording so you could give me your your take on it because it's not good. It's going to be a really nasty scar right on the top of my head. And in the meantime, I'm wearing a bandage the whole time and putting it under a hat most of the time when I'm in public so that it doesn't look like I have some weird yarmulke on top of my head <laughs> <laughs> or that I'm not, you know, that it doesn't fall off or whatever. So, yeah, it's it's bad. It's nasty. It's I'm not very it hurt? happy about it. A little bit, not a ton. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, that's good anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's good that there's not a lot of pain involved, but it's going to be a really nasty, ugly scar. Um, 
maybe I'll have to have it fixed in the future mm. because it's 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 pretty bad. I'll have to show you when we're done. Okay. Um. So there was that. We got the new doors. I have other notes up here about things that we're going to talk about in this episode that will be fun. Some things that I noticed today while I was watching the news. You noticed? Noticed? Them? I noticed them. I'm tripping all over my tongue today, man. <laughs> There's something about recording on a Sunday. It's like it is different. It yeah, it it has a whole different vibe to it. Like usually Sundays at this time, I would still be drinking coffee and watching the rest of my news programs. But yeah, it's it's thrown a thrown a wrench in the works, but it's fine. We'll work through it. It'll be good. Hi, this is Christine Stenquist with Truce, together for responsible use in cannabis education. If you're interested in medical cannabis in Utah, follow us on our social media. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Truce Utah. If you're interested in donating to our awesome nonprofit, go to truceutah.org. And thank you so much for listening to the Godless Revolution podcast. I've got a good feature for you. No, you haven't. Rude. You haven't even heard it yet. No need. Crystals. Told you. The healing power. <laughs> They're bullshit. You're so narrow minded. No. You don't believe in anything. Yes, I do. Thought you were atheist. Yeah, it doesn't mean I don't believe in anything, does it? It means I don't believe in any God. How can you not believe in God? Which one? What do you mean? Well, uh, Zeus. Who? Greek God. Or Ra or Ganesh. No, not those ones. The real one in the Bible. Yahweh. Just God. Well, you know how you don't believe in all those other gods I mentioned? That's how I don't believe in yours. How can you not believe that someone created all this, though? Why do you believe that someone created it all? Because it's so good. Can't just be chance, can it? What, the Big Bang? Everything came from nothing? That's impossible. You're right. God did it. Right. So, where did God come from? He's always been around. There you go. Easy, isn't it? You and the Godless Revolution will be reassimilated in three, two, one. I'm ready to cor- record some more. Are you ready to record some to more? Cor- cor- record some, some more. more. Ready to cor- record some more. Okay. Should be fun. Um, we're going to be talking about banning stuff. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking about... Like rays? Like rays? Ray bans? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. No. No, we're not going to be talking Aww. about ray bans. If we could ban the sun's rays from the harmful stuff that keeps giving me bad things on my body, that'd be great. We'd do it. We'd do it. Kills a lot of people. Makes a lot of people miserable. Um, we should blow the sun up. Just get rid of it. <laughs> That'd solve our problems. Uh-huh. <laughs> so during the Democratic debate this last week, um, which I thought was a pretty good spectacle, it had some good moments for different people. I think... Um, I think probably my favorite part of it was Beto O'Rourke's response to a question about um, gun control legislation. Yeah, let's let's play that clip and we can talk about it while that's going on. You said, quote, Americans who own AR-15s and AK-47s will have to sell them to the government, all of them. You know, the critics call this confiscation. Are you proposing taking away their guns and how would this work? And I love his response because there's no hesitation. There's no equivocation. He says exactly what he wants to do. I am. If it's a weapon that was designed to kill people on a battlefield. If the high impact, high velocity round, when it hits your body, shreds everything inside of your body because it was designed to do that so that you would bleed to death on a battlefield and not be able to get up and kill one of our soldiers when we see that being used against children and in odessa i met the mother of a 15 year old girl who was shot by an Mm ar-15 and that mother watched her bleed to death over the course of an hour because so many other people were shot by that ar-15 in odessa in midland there weren't enough ambulances to get to them in time hell yes we're going to take your ar-15 your ak-47 we're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow americans anymore when yeah. I heard him, when I heard him say that, I was watching this in the kitchen with, with Tracy, uh, while we were having dinner. And I, in my seat, started clapping and said, fuck yeah, I'm so glad he fucking said that. It's, 
it's ridiculous to me that we're talking about banning things like vapes. We're not even talking about banning fucking cigarettes. We're talking about banning vapes and yeah. vape juice, which we know is safer than cigarettes. We're not talking about banning c- cigarettes. We're not talking about banning guns. We're talking about banning vapes, which is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, how many of those people are going to go back to smoking cigarettes? Yeah, ha- that that is much more dangerous mm-hmm. for them, much more harmful, not only for themselves, but for everybody around them. And, and it, it, it's, it's fucking bullshit. I want to get to the rest of, of this comment from Beto here from the debate. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to say this. I'm listening to the people of this country. The day after I proposed doing that, I went to a gun show in Conway, Arkansas to meet with those who are selling AR-15s and AK-47s and those who are buying those weapons. And you might be surprised there was some common ground there. Folks who said, I would willingly give that up, cut it to pieces. I don't need this weapon to hunt, to defend myself. It is a weapon of war. So let's do the right thing, but let's bring everyone in America into the conversation, Republicans, Democrats, gun owners, and non-gun owners alike. That'll never happen. Well, probably not. Conservatives will never willingly give them up. Yeah, pro- probably not Too far gone, but I, I, I love that he was totally honest about it, that yes, that is what he would like to do. And he's not saying ban all guns, take all guns away from you, which is what we hear from people on the right who make disingenuous straw man arguments of what their opponent is saying or the people who they disagree with are saying, because they can't just be fucking honest about their stance on this. They have to insert a bunch of fucking hyperbole make it a black and white issue of you can have all the guns or none of the guns it's it's ridiculous it fucking pisses me off we hear the same thing about healthcare we hear it about guns we hear it about a a variety of issues Mm -hmm. and it's really frustrating that the the media and the powers that be who have access to people to get them to make statements like this Instead of having an actual conversation about it, they try to reduce everything down to a little soundbite that then is shared everywhere and becomes this viral bit of news. When I love what he said, I think it's great. I think it's, I think it's amazing that he is unafraid to say that. I, I am very happy that he did say that. What I'm really frustrated by are the disingenuous arguments that are had around it. And everybody tries to turn it into a black and white issue, and it's just not. It's not. I mean, I would, I would not mind at all if they were to ban all guns. I think that would be fine. But that's yeah. not really what anybody in power is proposing. They're yeah. proposing things like limiting the number of rounds that a clip can carry. They're limit. They want to limit uh, how fast that you can reload. That you can put lead or steal down range. They want to make sure that you can't walk into a place. You can't, you can't be in a hotel in Las Vegas and wound 500 people and kill. I can't even remember how many more Yeah. in one incident. Right. There have been six deaths linked to vaping. And I believe almost all six of them were also linked to black market vaping of THC uh cartridges mm-hmm. that were cut with I think they were looking at vitamin E oil yep as as being the likely culprit for causing a lot of the lung issues around vaping that we've seen there have been six deaths and let's see six deaths and over 450 reported cases of lung problems vaping has been around for how fucking long but we also don't know what you know of those 450 reported lung problems how many people already had lung problems mm-hmm. or were in the process of developing lung problems see mm-hmm. because our health care is so shit here it's hard to know because we don't have a good way to track all of that stuff unless people were getting regular checkups physicals which we don't do in this country that's right. not a that's not a like unless you have something specific like your dermatologist where you need to go get checked for stuff like that generally speaking we don't see doctors regularly where we have this this history of reports documenting this whole thing. So we, we really have no idea how many of those 450 cases are directly results, uh, resulted of from vacant. I'm catching it. <laughs> You're welcome. Vaking. <laughs> how many are resulted of vaking? <laughs> You're welcome. That's what I meant to say. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's it's ridiculous. So we have we have politicians nationally and locally. Uh, Trump has mentioned that he wants to look at possibly banning vaping. Politicians here in Utah have talked about banning vaping. They talk about banning vaping. I don't believe there's been even a single death here in the state of Utah from vaping. There have been six that we know of nationally in, in the entire history. in the entire history of vaping, which has been around for at least seven or eight years, if and, not longer. And they were vaping stuff that's already illegal anyway. Right. Yeah. And that's that's another issue, too, is that because marijuana is illegal, people, because they don't have access to everything or they want to try to save some money, you know, it's either illegal where they are and or they are trying to save some money. So they turn to the black market to purchase their products. And of course, those aren't regulated. So with legalization would also come regulation that could help keep people safe instead of putting them in harm's way. But instead, they're talking about banning something that has fewer deaths per year than it's been in existence. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. They talk about banning vapes. They haven't. They're talking about banning vapes as being dangerous and causing six deaths. They haven't banned fucking cigarettes. I know. Why are they not banning cigarettes? Why didn't they fucking ban cigarettes decades ago? Yeah. When they knew that they were harmful, that they were that they were killing thousands of people per year. Not six over a decade. It's fucking ridiculous. It's stupid. It's something to get people's political base riled up. It makes me really angry when people can't have an honest discussion about something. If you, if it's a real issue, then you should have real points of interest that you can discuss in common ground where you can work out a deal with each other and negotiate. Instead, it turns into a black and white issue where nobody will budge an inch and nothing gets fucking resolved. All we do is argue about stupid shit all the time. Seems personal, huh? Like he has a teenager that got caught vaping one time or something, and now he's like, I'm going to fucking ban this forever, (laughs) you know? (laughs) I'm going to make sure that you can't get this and nobody else can get this. Yeah. Yeah, well, and it's kind of a personal issue to us. I mean, we both vape. Sure, but I mean, but but I mean, because he, well, we haven't even played that clip yet, but. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, we we have another uh, clip here from the local politician who's talking about banning vaping here in Utah. All right, so the audio comes to us from Fox 13. It's Utah's local news station from Fox, and it's pretty good. It's the news station that I watch when I watch local news for the most part. And they're going to be talking about the local legislator who here who is thinking about banning vaping. These are gigantic claims that are coming from the state capitol this afternoon. Basically what they're saying is this independent lab conducted a study on e-liquids. 84% tested positive for illegal drugs, but those numbers may be leaving more questions than they are answers. You've probably seen them in use, e-cigarettes. Yeah, I used it as a tool to quit smoking. A relatively new form of smoking, constantly gaining popularity. According to the Royal College College of Physicians, it's a much safer alternative, 95% safer. But as vape use goes up, so do the red flags. 35 people in intensive care right now in the state of Utah, plus another 12 cases pending. Putting vape pens to paper, Representative Paul Ray contacted an independent lab to test products people bought in Salt Lake County. Go to some different Salt Lake County vape shops and just buy some stuff off the shelves. The findings showed some big accusations amid a small sample set. Out of the 12 bottles, 10 tested positive for opioids, PCP, barbiturates, and THC. Which is fucking nuts to me. It's so bullshit. It's such <laughs> bullshit. I mean, they, and, and here on the screen, they have just some scribbled notes from somebody. I'm guessing somebody who was taking notes down for whatever the test results were. And it just has numbers. And then it says like PCP next to it or THC or opioid or whatever. But it doesn't tell you how much. It doesn't tell you what the sample was of. Yeah. None of that. It doesn't tell you if, you know, if the level that they detected it in was so low as to be really nothing, you know, yeah. that there's no chance of you even getting anything from it. And it also is fucking ridiculous when you consider the cost that would be incurred from putting actual substances yeah, like that yeah, into yeah. vape products. It would be a losing proposition for anybody selling that product because they're going to be spending more to put in a tiny trace amount of a drug that doesn't 
doesn't do anything yeah, you're just for throwing you. it away yeah you're just fucking throwing it away to put it in a vape product for what purpose it's just the whole argument is fucking stupid yeah it's ridiculous on its face and this stupid jackass gets in front of the news gets in front of the press and starts making these wild outlandish claims and he himself later in this says we don't even know if it was you know maybe a false positive or whatever but i'm gonna get out here and run my fucking mouth yeah about something i know jack fucking shit about that's why I said it seems personal, because yeah. he, ha- he has no evidence or no real reason to ban it. He's just he's out there doing it, and he's very dogmatic about it, and it, there doesn't appear to be any good reason for it. So yeah. that's why it strikes me as something personal. Yeah. Or someone blew it in his face one time or something. <laughs> well, while he was at the airport, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so roughly 84% of the product tested tested positive for an illegal drug. Which which is fucking bullshit. Yeah. That's just, that's, I can't even begin to tell you how fucking stupid that is. A second, a, a, a second of any bit of critical thinking about this would reveal just how fucking stupid it is. I can't believe nobody at this press conference pressed him on that to say, why are you making these wild claims when you yourself say that you don't even know if it was just a false positive? Representative Ray believes are a smoking gun in his efforts to rid the beehive state of any vaping product. If I could ban the entire product, I will. This is. And again, he says he would ban the entire product line. He doesn't talk about cigarettes. He doesn't talk about guns. He doesn't talk about any of these other things that we know kill people in massive numbers. But, you know, we're going to get rid of vaping. Fucking yeah, and, stupid. And, and also the, the, the lack of self-awareness too, as a Republican who, you know, have, have as a group been complaining for ever that the Democrats want to take all the guns and let the free market decide, let capitalism work. Yep. Consumers should have a choice. Yep. We don't want excessive legislation, regulation on things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking yep. every bit of this is hokey bullshit. Yep. And major hypocrisy. Yeah. This is the tip of the iceberg. Others? There's a lot of controls that go into how this product's manufactured. Seeing more issues than answers. We don't know exactly how much or to what extent, um, or even if there were false positives. I think it's terribly misinformed. We don't even know if there were false positives, but I'm going to go out and start a press conference and say that I want to ban vapes. I wonder if the Mormon church is pushing this. Possibly. I mean... That would make more sense. They're They're behind most of the... Most of the anti-sin things yeah, here yeah. in the state that people do. Um, or even if there were false positives. I think it's terribly misinformed. Leaving concerns over what could happen in a vapeless state. It would be harmful to the public health. It would be harmful to local businesses, the local economy, and it's just uninformed. Well, we would, we implore of, uh, you know, legislature, representatives, senators, is work with us work with us. We are not the enemy. We're on your side. Representative Hutchings was also there in support today. We did reach out to Beech Tree Diagnostics, the lab that performed this testing. They have yet to get back to us. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. I just... Hmm. I think it's so fucking ridiculous that they want to talk about banning vapes instead of talking about any of the real other dangers things. yeah real dangerous things that we know are out there that we know that we have put regulations on that we have put other restrictions on why if he wants to ban vaping as being dangerous why hasn't he proposed a ban on cigarettes yeah or alcohol yeah alcohol kills a shit ton more people than vaping all the time why isn't that all of a sudden illegal yeah and those are expressly against the word of wisdom yeah not that that should have anything to do with it but since it does yeah, it just drives me nuts. Aloha, everybody. This is Nico Gonzalez, former Jehovah's Witness and a content producer for the Conversations with God podcast. Be on the lookout for my own show, coming soon, called If I Was God. You're listening to The Godless Revolution. Sex is horrible and no one really likes it. So that's what I play whenever I uh, catch a kid with a condom. My readers will love this. Oh, and this is what I play whenever I catch a student with drugs. <clears throat> Meth gives you joy only gods can experience, but don't do it. 
rejoining the Godless Revolution podcast now. Okay, next up we are going to be talking about Senator Ted Cruz, our favorite guy! Yay! Mmm, love this guy. He's such a smarmy fuck. I just, he's grown a beard now, so his face is a small bit less punchable, but it's still a very punchable face. Yeah, yeah, but it was definitely worse when he, his chin went right into his chest. <laughs> just with that flesh turtleneck he was always wearing. <laughs> now there's a little bit of a distinction. There's, we've been watching, um, Sneaky Pete, the latest season of that. I don't know if you I've watch it or heard of it. With it. It's it stars Giovanni Ribisi. It's on okay. Amazon Prime Video. It's it's a pretty good show. Anyway, um, there's a character that they've introduced this season who is like the great grandfather of these people in the story, and he's been estranged from them for decades. But it's this older actor who's been in a bunch of different stuff, and he's aged a lot since the last thing I've seen him in. But he has this neck waddle, mm. this chin waddle thing that is just ridiculous like it looks like somebody put a vagina on his throat it's really yeah it's i'll have to show you i'll have to show you a picture we we're watching it the other night and i was like jesus look at that waddle on that guy mm. and tracy's like oh my god yeah that's really bad and i'm like it looks like somebody put a vagina on his neck it's it's what it looks like a shaved vagina put on this man's face or neck right below his chin like and, a like he's tucking a deflated football <laughs> <laughs> something it's really it's really disturbing to watch every now and then uh but this was ted cruz on um this week with george stephanopoulos so watched this earlier today and it made me so angry a because it's ted cruz and b because he's doing the things that we were just fucking talking about where he makes all of these disingenuous statements and twists things into where it's this black and white issue when it's not, there's a lot of nuance involved here, and it just fucking, it angers me whenever I hear people do the things that we're going to hear mm -hmm. Ted Cruz do in this interview. Let's talk about the democratic process in relation to guns right now. Of course, your state has been rocked yeah. by those two recent shootings. And, and the latest poll coming out this week from Knipiak in Texas shows that about 90 percent, almost 90 percent of Texans support extending background checks to private sales. So does your Republican Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick says it makes no sense to allow strangers to sell guns to others in private sales. Does he have a point? Well, listen, we absolutely need to do more. We need to strengthen background checks. And, and I'll tell you, George, I'm a Texan. I was in Odessa in the days following that horrific shooting. I was in El Paso in the days after that shooting. Before that, uh, I was in Sutherland Springs the day after that shooting, standing in that, that beautiful sanctuary covered with blood. Which, when I heard it the first time, was fucking weird. And it's weird the second time, too, that beautiful sanctuary covered yeah, with what blood. what does that mean? Like. I, I'm guessing he means it's a it's a, a church. It's supposed to be this beautiful oh. sanctuary, and now it's covered in blood. But the way he worded it was really clumsy. We do that all the time. We've done it several times on the show. Been very sure. clumsy with our words, but it just struck me as what a weird way to put that. Yeah, and it's happening live, so he doesn't really have much chance to fix it or anything. But it's still it's still a strange thing to me. It's also strange to me that he goes through this laundry list. Of shootings, shooting after yeah, yeah, shooting yeah. after shooting after shooting before he says there's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like how fucking ridiculous is that? I noticed that. Yeah. And then they want to talk about banning vapes. Jesus fucking Christ, people. Right. Uh, I was in Santa Fe High School. It's less than an hour from my house. I was there that morning of the shooting. I have been with these victims. I've been with first responders. I've been with families who are crying. And let me tell you, George, we've seen too damn many of these in the state of Texas. So we need to end them. Absolutely, yes. And how does he propose that we do so? How yeah, should I'm we end? Now he's he's very he's very passionate about this. Clearly, yeah, he's been he's building up. So he's clearly he's thought about solution. this for a while. Yeah. He's, I mean, he just listed off the, all of these different shootings that he's been to, all of these different uh, people that he's visited with after these shootings and what a huge problem this is. And they're even happening in churches, by golly, these, this beautiful sanctuary covered in blood. Now, the question is, what do we need to do that actually works? And, and this is where I get frustrated with Democratic politicians in Washington, because the proposals they're putting forward would not have stopped a single one of these mass murders. Why is that? Why does he think that that none of the proposals would have stopped these mass shooters? Is it because they still would have had access to the guns? Because 
none of these people had a criminal history and shouldn't mm-hmm. and should have been denied access to the guns. Mm-hmm. So then what is the what is the real issue that we should be addressing? If the legislation that Democrats have proposed wouldn't have stopped these people from getting access to guns and going and fucking killing people, what then do you, Matt, think would be the most <laughs> logical thing we should do to make sure that people don't have easy access to guns? Well, what I, as I've said before, the number one thing that's common throughout all shootings, the one thing that all shooters have in common is they all have a gun. Yeah. Uh, and access to firearms seems to be the big problem. So if, if legislation is clipping off the wrong end, you know, so to speak, mm-hmm. say like people with mental illness, I know that's not a thing anymore, but once in a while that goes through. Yeah. Um, and, and that didn't work, uh, or, um, limiting clip sizes or whatever that's a, i would say we've got to get rid of the guns that are capable of firing off these kinds of rounds like ar-15s buzzword mm-hmm. you know and and ak-47s all these types that that are used so commonly that mow down 40 or 50 people at a time yeah massive numbers of people massive numbers of casualties in a very short amount of time yeah i would say that's the number one problem yeah yeah, well, that, let's, that people own those things. Oh yeah, well let's let's see what Cruz thinks is the real issue. Here's what we need to do. I introduced in 2013 my first few months in the Senate legislation with Chuck Grassley called Grassley Cruz that targets felons, it targets fugitives, it targets those with dangerous mental illness. It improves and strengthens the background checks. It stops criminals and and those with dangerous mental illness from getting firearms and those who commit felonies it puts them in prison to actually stop these crimes but what how would it stop the crime if they only commit the felony that's their first <laughs> that's tri- that's their yeah. that's their crime he just fucking said that none of these measures that are out there would have stopped these people from getting the guns yep but then he just says what they're do- what they're doing and he's working on this legislation since 2013 yeah that is which the means same that, that hasn't thing. worked either right yeah it's it it's so fucking frustrating and infuriating to hear him say this kind of shit. Oh, the Democrats proposed these things that wouldn't have stopped these killers from getting these guns in the first place. And then he goes through the list of things that he just said won't fucking work to stop them. He doesn't address the real issue of maybe we should make sure that people, that nobody can have access to these kinds of weapons. Do they get bonuses for like getting a bill passed no matter what? No. Okay. Because it seems like that might be the case. <laughs> I mean, the, like they have some kind of incentive to get a bill passed. So he like he's here promoting his bill. He doesn't even care what whether it's works or whether it's consistent. He's just yeah, trying to well, get the I mean, word out to sell his bill. The the bonus that they get, I I guess if you you could call it a bonus in that it's a feather in their cap that oh I worked on this legislation that passed and I can point to this as my work in the Senate. We created this legislation that is going to help these people that is going to solve this problem. I'm the one who worked on that. I'm the one who got it passed. That That is out there because of me. That's a feather in my cap. So that's the bonus that they get out of it, I guess, is just being able to point at any legislation that they've crafted and championed and saying that it was my work on this that got this passed. So you should vote for me next election. You should donate to my campaign, blah, blah, blah. If they go, if blah, they go blah, to the blah. Hill and they're completely ineffectual, they can't get anything yeah. passed, then they can't, then they don't have any work in, in, as, as a legislator to point to to say, these are the good things that I'm doing to represent my people and to keep them safe or to improve their lives or whatever. If you don't have any legislation passed, then what the fuck are you doing there is the view that a lot of people have of that. What about we extending- got in 2013, a majority of the Senate voted for Grassley Cruz, 52 senators, nine Democrats that got enormous bipartisan support. But sadly, Harry Reid and the Democrats filibustered it, which was a cynical decision. What we need to do right now, we need to take up Grassley Cruz. And for him to talk about filibusters as being a, cyn- a, a cynical way to, to legislate, the man who fucking ran a filibuster himself, something that that's he, what he got. That's what he became a household name for. Right, right. What a fucking smarmy fucking prick this fucking piece of fucking shit fucking guy is. I can't use the word fuck enough to describe this asshole. Fuck me. Cruise and pass it so we can stop these okay. felons and fugitives and people with dangerous mental illness but what from about getting expanding, guns what about and ex- committing these horrific crimes. What about expanding the background they checks aren't to committing sales? It. Yeah. The president they gets aren't behind committing that. those crimes. Yeah. 
Stop them from committing these horrendous. They're not the ones committing. These are kids mostly. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are, are, you know, or young adults. I mean, there's a, there's a few exceptions, but I mean, these big, like Omar Mateen, he wasn't very old, was he? Was like 19 or 20? Yeah. Something like that. I mean, these aren't dangerous fug, I mean, they're dangerous. They're not, uh, they're not they're already not felon fugitive. fugitives. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a lot for a lot of them. This is like their first real crime. Yeah. Yeah. And those who commit felonies, it puts them in prison to actually stop these crimes. But what about we got in 2013, a majority of the Senate voted for Grassley Cruz, 52 senators, nine Democrats. It got enormous bipartisan support. But sadly, Harry Reid and the Democrats filibustered it, which was a cynical decision. What we need to do right now, we need to take up Grassley Cruz and pass it so we can stop. I backed it up a little too far. Sorry, everybody. But what about expanding? What about committing these horrific crimes? What about expanding the background checks to private sales? If the president gets behind that, will you? You know, George, the problem with that proposal, and that is the proposal you've teed on the one that the Democrats focus on obsessively. It would not have stopped even a single one of these mass shootings. It's not it's not a proposal designed. If you say we want to stop these shootings, their proposal doesn't do it. But you know what it does? So what are you proposing that would actually fucking stop it? You haven't mentioned a fucking thing because there isn't anything except for getting rid of the guns. Yeah, that's why that's that's why we go in these circles every fucking time there's a mass shooting, Mm -hmm. because nobody wants to say until now with Beto O'Rourke finally saying, yeah. We're going to take all those fucking guns because yeah. that's the solution. We're going to take your AK-15s. We're going to take your, <laughs> your AR-15s, your AK-47s. We're, we're going to take them from you. You don't get these weapons of war. <sighs> fucking Ted Cruz. Us, as soon as you have every person private to private transaction, if you have a grandfather giving his grandson a, a shotgun to go bird hunting, if you have a federal government background check for that, What you will see the next step to be is the only way to enforce that is a federal gun registry. And And why would that be an issue? Why would that be a problem for anybody? If you are a safe, responsible gun owner, why would it be an issue for you to have your gun registered at, at the federal level? Why is there not a national database of guns and who owns them? And why would that be an issue for the people who do have them? In fact, we should we should even consider doing that for like cars and everything else too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Weird, weird how we how we have those things for cars, right? Yeah. That's I mean that's that's one of the things that people on the on the side of no gun control are always tout is oh well you can kill people with all kinds of things you can kill people with baseball bats or cars you know now they're using cars to just mow people down. Okay, well, yeah, but we have insurance for cars, we have testing, we have licensing, we have all of these different measures. Registration. All, yeah, all of these regulations and measures around cars to make them as safe as possible so that it's difficult for more people to be injured by them. And that if someone is injured by a vehicle, we know how to track that vehicle to, to find out who is responsible, who's the one who allowed this vehicle to do this. And registration, as far as I know... The, at least etymologically, is just legislation in Tokyo. <laughs> oh, God. That's bad. <laughs> is it? Uh, Registra- registration? <laughs> Ted, I just fucking, Ted Cruz is just such a fucking dick. And a gun registry is the step you need for gun confiscation. And by the way, George, as you know, we now have three of the ten Democratic presidential candidates. And if that's the step that you need for gun confiscation, then uh, I just had this thought in my head. So if you if you have to have a a national registry in order to actually confiscate any guns, a registry, which would mean which would mean that he believes that any kind of buyback or confiscation of AK-47s, AR-15s, the assault-style weapons won't work because there is no national registry, then if he believes that that legislation won't work, why is he fighting so hard against even having that come to the floor for debate? Why would why would he mm. be arguing against that legislation if he thinks that it wouldn't really address the problem anyway? And maybe that, well, yeah, I guess that would be why. I mean, if I'm going to Steelman's argument and say, 
you know, why would you fight against this bit of legislation if you think it's not going to work anyway? Well, because I don't think it will work. That's why I'm arguing yeah. against it. Why yeah. would we go through all of the work and hassle of putting this in place to have something that doesn't work anyway? Hmm. So I can see that. Okay. Candidates actively advocating for gun confiscation. They are saying the federal government is going to come forcibly take your gun. So, so look, I think that is a bad idea. The federal government should not be confiscating guns from law-abiding citizens, but here's what we should be doing. We should be doing what will stop murders like this. And that raises another issue. They're law-abiding citizens right now, right? Yeah. And so if we pass a law that says you can't have this gun, and then they don't give up that gun, then they're no longer a law-abiding citizen who probably shouldn't have that gun anyway. Right, right, right. (laughs) Right? So it's kind of a circular argument there to say that they're law-abiding citizens who own these guns. Yeah. and Okay, sure, but they also don't own fucking hand grenades or thermonuclear weaponry. They don't have... You know, they don't have access to fully automatic weapons. We already have regulations in place that we know will limit casualties that people can create through use of these weapons. We're talking about passing more regulations, more legislation to further restrict the types of weapon that people can have. And I don't understand how he doesn't see that or why other people don't realize that he does understand that and is being a disingenuous fucking asshole. Yeah, because this is the same kind of thing that they'll talk about with uh, issues on the border. You know, they'll say, well, if they if they didn't come over here the right way, then they are criminals. Right. Just because so of we're going to make it that, so that they that there is no right way for them to come over here. We're going to make it so that they can't even seek asylum yeah. here. So yeah. That anytime they do come over, then they are breaking the law because now we've changed the law so that what previously was legal is now illegal so now they are all criminals yeah and that's what the democrats are trying to do with with more legislation to to for more gun control and he's saying well we shouldn't be taking it away from law-abiding citizens well if they're law-abiding citizens yeah then they wouldn't be law-abiding citizens anymore if they don't want to give up their guns based on their based on their own types of arguments from the border right yep which is taking guns away from felons and fugitives, which is prosecuting felons and fugitives who try to illegally buy guns, right. which which is making straw man purchases illegal. I've introduced legislation to do that. I pressed for it. I spoke this week to both Mitch McConnell and President Trump, urged both of them, take up Grassley Cruz. Let's stop the criminals and let's protect the Second Let, Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens. Let's talk about the political situation in Texas right now. The latest polls show that President Trump is underwater. His disapproval around... Uh, and now they, they get away from the gun debate and they start talking about, hey, Ted Cruz, during the 2016 election, you and Donald Trump were at odds with each other. He's He said some pretty awful things about you and your wife. You said some pretty awful things about him. Why now are you sucking his dick every chance you get? <laughs> 50 percent. You've already had five Republican House members announce that they're not going to run next year. And you actually sounded the alarm this week saying Texas is a battleground in 2020. That's that's really saying something that the state of Texas is going to be a presidential battleground next time around. Well, look, I I think that's right. I think Texas is divided. I think our country is divided. I will say, George, I think Thursday night was a very bad night for the Democrats. I, I think Thursday night, the Democrats galloped even further to the left. If, if you look at Thursday night, the entire night of the debate, not a single Democrat talked about jobs. Not a... And he's saying that the Democrats marched farther to the left. I think he may have said further, which is a misuse of the word, but uh, he, he means they went farther to the left. That's in relation to America only, not the rest of the world. The rest of the world is already on board with much of the things that the Democrats are saying. And it's not a left view. That's the no. majority view of among all people around outside the United States. The United States has gotten so far to the right on so yeah. many things over the past few decades that in comparison to the rest of the world, even the super left leaning Democrats are mainstream everywhere else. Yeah, Bernie is pretty much in the middle. He's yeah. right in the center. Yeah, the the Overton window has just shifted so far to the right following Reagan, Bush, yep. fucking Bush again. Bush, yeah, Bush again, um and Trump especially. And Trump and fucking Nixon, those oh, Nixon. those oh, yeah. presidents shifted everything so far to the right that we're in a space now that 
we are lagging behind the rest of the world in technical innovation, in diversity, in mm-hmm. equality, in, in, in equality of, of all kinds. Of, of all kinds, yeah. Of outcome, income equality, healthcare quality, everything. Yep. The United States is now falling farther and farther and farther behind because of Republican policies that have pushed things to the right for decades now. A single Democrat talked about the economy, about the fact that we've got the lowest African-American unemployment ever recorded or the lowest Hispanic unemployment ever recorded. Instead, what the Democrats told the American people is they want to raise your taxes. They want to triple the price you pay for a gallon of gas at the tax at, at, at the pump. They, they want open borders. They want to take away your health insurance. And they want to take away your guns. Listen, that is an agenda designed to resonate in the faculty lounges at an Ivy League college. If you're if you're but sipping how- sherry in a fa- <laughs> this part, this part made me fucking angry, too, because he's basically making the argument that these are the conversations that intelligent people are having. Yeah, these are the things that intelligent people want done. We don't want these things done, do we? We're not intelligent people. <laughs> We're not the ones who actually fucking put a lot of thought into these things, who study them as a science, who who devote our lives to solving these problems. We just want to sit back with our beer on our porch, not in some yeah. Ivy League school sipping sherry. Yeah. You fucking idiot. And he's lying, too, about taking away health care and, and all that. Oh, yeah. It's an absolute lie. And and again, he's pointing it as a he's painting it as a black and white issue that yeah. your taxes are going to go up. Yeah, your taxes will go up. But you know what? It's because it's going to offset the cost. You're no longer going to be paying for your insurance premiums through yeah. work. Yeah. I wouldn't be paying over a thousand dollars a month for insurance premiums. Instead, that would be taken as taxes. He doesn't fucking mention that. Right. Your taxes are going to go up. And he knows it. Yeah. And he knows it. Yeah. He knows it. And he's being fucking disingenuous about it. And there were Democrats on stage during the debate on Thursday that said the same fucking ridiculous thing that it drove me nuts that even among the Democrats, they're using the same fucking stupid Republican talking points that this asshole is using. I heard... I don't know, probably five or six of the Democrats on stage using those same fucking stupid, ridiculous talking points about the healthcare system. Faculty lounge, you've got your party, but show me one steel worker, show me one truck driver, show me one person in America who actually works for a living who's interested in that radical agenda. And, and the problem is, George, I think Donald Trump has br- because professors don't work for a living. People yeah. people who work in the sciences and in academies, they don't actually work for a living. No. They just use their brains, fucking lazy bastards. <laughs> Broken the Democratic Party. Well, but they they, they are defined wanna... now just by hating him. They ought to be the party of jobs. They used to be a party focused on jobs. They're not anymore. Let me close with a question what he's done to the Republican Party. And, and, and Boy, when you ran against Donald Trump, you did not mince any words. Called him a pathological liar, a bully. He said, imagine what would happen in the next five years if he were president. Now you, uh, you're supporting him for re-election. He's unified the Republican Party behind him as well. How do you explain that? Were you just wrong then? What changed? Yeah, were you wrong then or are you wrong now? What's changed? Yeah. Results matter. We've delivered on policy for two and a half years. For two and a half years, we've been putting kids in cages. We've been destroying our reputation on the world stage. We've been limiting people's access to health care. We've been doing all of these horrible, horrible fucking things that we've wanted to do forever. Introducing the rise of the new Nazis. Yeah. All of these things that we're doing now, we've wanted to do forever. And Donald Trump is helping to deliver on those things by fiat, not through the legislative process. But he's just fucking ordering yeah. people to do it and writing executive executive uh, decisions to do that. I've worked very closely with the president, and we've seen remarkable results for the American people. We passed the biggest tax cut in a generation. That's a big deal. I worked hard to bring Republicans together to deliver on that. And I'm not going to talk at all about, you know, our budget deficit now ballooning to astronomical levels because of those tax cuts that were given primarily to wealthy people. We've repealed hundreds of job killing regulations. That's incredibly important. We've repealed regulations that keep our water clean, that keep our air clean, that help make sure that our planet isn't going to go up in flame in the next 20 years or so. Important because the result is the economy's taken off. 
We have the lowest unemployment in 50 years. That's another thing that I've noticed a lot of the Republicans talking about is the employment rates. They're not, they're, they're not concerned that people actually have a job that can lead them to a good standard of life. They want fucking slaves and puppets. They want people to be employed for the lowest amount possible and have as many of those people employed as possible. Because then they just become mindless drones that you can order around, do different things with. They're not looking to improve somebody's quality of life. They're looking to improve the bottom line for the employer. Mm -hmm. They don't give a fuck about the employees themselves. They want to make sure that employers have the people they need, that they can pay them as little as possible, and develop their own army of slaves that now are just feeding into Republican coffers and into the coffers of big business and into the coffers of the CEOs and corporate fat cats who run all of the shit. Yeah. The ones who don't work for a living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the ones the ones who the people who do work for a living that have been duped by these fucking Republican policies and assholes like Ted Cruz continue voting into office. Mm hmm. We've got, you know, the numbers came out just the other day. African-American poverty is the lowest we have ever recorded. Hispanic poverty is the lowest we've ever recorded. Those are real results. Six million people have come off of food stamps. Those are lives being changed. Not Many of those people that he fails to fucking say again because he's trying to make it a black and white issue and paint his party in the best light possible. Yeah, they're they're off food stamps and, and assistance programs now, not because they don't need that assistance anymore, but because they hit a limit. Yeah. They hit a limit that was imposed by Republicans who said, well, now you can't have any more of this help. So fuck you, I guess. Yep. Go fend for yourself. Good luck. We don't give a fuck how you do it. But if you do anything illegal, we're going to throw you in, in prison that we're continuing to privatize to feed more of our corporate fat cats and CEOs and people who donate to our campaign. It's so frustrating that more people don't see how fucking ridiculous all of these policies are and the things that they say on television. If you know what's going on, if you pay attention to politics, you can't be so easily duped. And so it's really frustrating for me that I don't see more people sharing more political things on the social media, talking about politics more often, pointing out how fucking ridiculous these arguments made by the Republican side of the House and Senate and presidency and everywhere else where Republicans have control are ridiculous. They're fucking nonsense. And I think a lot of people aren't aware of that because not enough people are talking about it. Not only that. Our nation's safer. We're rebuilding our military. We're standing by our friends and allies. We're standing up to our enemies. And, we, and we've confirmed 150 new constitutionalist judges to the bench. Those are constitutionalist judges. Ugh. Read right wing, right wing activist judges yep. that this guy fucking complained about the left putting putting radical judges on the yep, bench and, yep. and they're just going to be legislating their radical agendas from the bench instead of just adjudicating things based on the law. They're real results. And so listen, yes, in 2016, I had a vigorous primary where, where we had a, and those, a, 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 by the way, those shouldn't count as results. That's just, that's just good fortune that Trump had to be, happened to get into the presidency during a time when there were vacancies to fill mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with his ability as a politician. Oh no. So no, it has, it has, he's counting that in the, in the wind column Yep, and it's not, it's, no. it's just fortune. Yeah. Roll the dice. And safer. We're rebuilding our military. We're standing by our friends and allies. And we're, we're cutting standing it for up the to wall. our enemies. And, we, and yeah, and we're not defending our friends and allies either. We're no. ostracizing our yes. friends and allies all over the world. Yeah. And we've confirmed 150 new constitutionalist judges to the bench. Those are real results. And so, listen, yes, in 2016, I had a vigorous primary where, where we had a, a, a significant contest. The people decided the election is over. Donald Trump is our president, and I had a job to do. Represent 28 million Texans, and I've done that each and every day. And I'm proud of the results that, that working together we've been able to produce and I think the American people want to continue seeing jobs and economic prosperity going forward. And this is all a smoke show. Everything that Trump has accomplished that people like Ted Cruz trumpet as a success is all a smoke show that is going to come crashing fucking down on top of everybody after he leaves, after he is voted out of office, hopefully next year or if he continues in office, it's going to be within the first two years of his, of his second uh, run as president of his second term because it's unsustainable. We can't sustain the levels of, 
of deficit spending that we're seeing now, the levels that are being spent on privatizing things like prisons, it's just all going to come crashing down unless there are a lot of changes that are made. But the Republican solution to those changes being made, that to the changes that need to be made, aren't going to be long-term solutions either. It's going to be something else that just kicks the can further down the road yep. or farther down the road <laughs> <laughs> that aren't actually going to solve anything. It'll look good on paper temporarily if you ignore a bunch of the other huge warning signs. Yeah. Senator Cruz, thanks for your time this morning. And fuck you very much. I just really fucking hate that guy. He's such a smarmy asshole. Yeah. He's so fucking slimy. Yeah, he's gross. Hello, my name is Tony from the Conversations with God podcast. And as the name suggests, on that podcast, I talk to the creator of the universe, God. We discuss philosophy, cooking, death and diseases, amongst other important subjects. And you're listening to the Godless Revolution podcast, which is much better than the Conversations with God podcast. Bridget. Wait. You should try praying. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to pray to God. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you know what? You tell that to God because he carried Ugh. that guy across the sand and there was one set of footprints, Bridget. It's Remember the dumbest that? thing I've ever heard. Then here, how about this? You pray to the Virgin Mother. Oh. She's my favorite. Mine too. Mothers cannot be virgins. Well, Mary can. She was blessed by the Holy Spirit. Mary was forced to have that baby. <gasps> Bridget. I'm sorry, but Matthew and Luke and whoever did some stuff to her. I don't want to hear it, Bridget. then called it an angel baby. Okay, listen to me. That is the mother of God now, you're talking about. We're all stuck praying to this angel baby. What are you talking about? I am on Mary's side. I am Team Mary. There are no teams. Yeah. There are no teams are in the teams. Bible. You are helping them get away with it. <gasps> Bridget, it's just blasphemous. That's what it is, and I don't really like it. I am sorry to break it to you, but there's not some old bearded guy in the sky watching over us. Thank you to everybody who has rated the show on iTunes and Stitcher and are following us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And to all our Patreon patrons, you make the show possible. What did you bring for us this week, Matt? I have brought in a... Did you bring it further? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Further and farther, there's a there's a small distinction, but it's important to some people. Hmm. Well, I'm sure we make plenty of mistakes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, this is from Fox News, and I have brought fake news. Oh, you I did? I mean, it's... It's a it's it's a real story that appeared on Fox News, but there's but it's just such bullshit. Oh yeah, you'll see what I mean. Okay. Could you be receiving life changing messages from the other side? Other side of what? Laura Lynn Jackson, author of the new book Signs: The Secret Language of the Universe, weighs in. Oh, Jesus, this is this is on an actual news site. Like a well, <laughs> is it, was it? Did you pull this from like Fox dot com or Fox yeah. News dot com? Fox News, yeah. Wow. It was right on their page. Hmm. Uh, when people we love die, is that the end of our relationship with them? Or is it possible that their souls survive and can communicate with us still? Can they visit us? Can they send us signs letting us know they're still with us and love us? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I doubt it very much. Based on my experiences, I've come to know that they do. <laughs> she knows mm -hmm. oh, I hope she has some really good evidence to back it up Because that would be earth shattering That would be life changing for everybody That mm -hmm. would be front page news across the world I'm glad you said that Dan Because oh. the next thing she says Is one of the main ways That uh. our loved ones on the other side Get our attention is to let us know That they're wa or uh, Is to let us know that they're watching over us And are still present in our lives By sending signs and messages one of their favorite is it is it through the smoke detector or carbon monoxide detector like my dad believes one of the favorite and easiest ways to do this by manipulating electrical devices oh it is <laughs> <laughs> awesome i wonder if my dad has seen this story <laughs> i wonder um it seems that they're able to affect electrical devices in some impressive ways mm -hmm. It should be impressive, huh? Uh, yeah. A conclusion like that. Often they will manipulate our cell phones with calls from unknown numbers <gasps> on meaningful days. 
by changing words in our text message boxes. On meaningful days, what does she mean by on meaningful days? Like you'll get a you'll get a an unknown call like maybe on or around your birthday from an unknown number yeah. like but if it happens on a non-meaningful day, what does that mean? That it's not somebody from the other side? Probably not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know how this works. I just, I'm just telling you. What, I'm just reporting the news, I, man. I'm just giving you the good evidence. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, by changing our words in the text message boxes or by having words and messages mysteriously appear in our text message boxes that we didn't type. 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 <laughs> <laughs> would not do it. My mouth would not do it. Even more impressive, they sometimes appear on camera for us. What? Sometimes it's in the form of a mysterious orb that appears in pictures of family gatherings and celebrations. Dust, a, a particle of dust that got right in front of the lens at an, at an inopportune a time? A mysterious orb. Oh, right. <laughs> Recently, a New York couple found some very curious footage on their home security camera. On August 8th, while checking their Nest camera at 1 a.m. in order to check on their ill cat, they found something else appearing that they couldn't quite explain. There seemed to be an image of a person along with a small pet. So that answers your question about ghost animals. <laughs> also checking on his sick cat. It also, by the way, just so happened to be the 20th anniversary that night of Joey's grandfather crossing. Coincidence? Crossing what? Oh, crossing over to the uh, other side. Uh, apparently, that's the end of the sentence. Just says crossing. Ah, Jesus. Another euf euphemism. Ugh. Coincidence? Dust? A spider crawling across the nest camera? Or could it be a visit by his grandfather who brought along a pet to also check on the cat and make reassure make his reassuring presence known? <laughs> <laughs> this is literally on the website. Oh, wow. In the footage, there is what appears like light energy in the form of a man or small anim and small animal by him walking toward the cat, pausing and then turning and going back. In the form of... All so, caught on video. So still doesn't even know that it would, like, even if this thing were to have happened, right, that there's this, this man and an animal on camera... Mm-hmm. It's not even clear enough that they can tell who it is. Nope. It's it's a the form of a man and maybe an animal. Doesn't doesn't it you can't say that it's your grandfather. That's you're projecting onto that, right? This woman is projecting onto that. Well she just said could it be? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just asking questions it's here, like people. Ancient aliens stuff. Yeah. Is it possible <laughs> that we were visited? Anyway, I don't want to keep reading, but yeah. Well, just it, people read it so much shit into that. Like, not only, not only, you know, could it be this bit of dust? Could it be a spider crawling across it? Well, sure. But could it also be this other thing that I can never demonstrate and there's no way to test it or if anything that any means that we do have for testing it has shown that it's bullshit like that. But that's not what I want to believe. I want to believe that it's, you know, people from the other side, after they've crossed over, who are coming here to visit me through electronic devices. That's stupid. Yep. That's so stupid. And if this, why is it that this person is only, you know, this person who's crossed over to the other side is only able to project an image into a camera, right? If they really wanted to get a message across to him, why wouldn't they appear during daylight, when this person is perfectly lucid, there and appear, you know, directly to that person instead of just their fucking camera. Because he didn't know the camera was there. Oh. He didn't have his ghost cloak on. <laughs> well, why would it matter, though, if that, like, because it sounds like what I got out of it is that he wanted to send a message, maybe, that he was there and was protecting. And so he left this on their camera, but. That doesn't, like I said, why wouldn't he just show up in person and say, hey, man, just me checking in. Wanted to let you know I'm checking on your cat. This is my dog. <laughs> yeah. This is my dog, Banjo, that yeah. I picked up on the other side. It doesn't really help, huh, if he's trying to get a message across by not making himself By not making the message clear. And right. not making a clear message, yeah. Yeah. 
None of this that is all just becomes... this is all just hopeful thinking, wishful thinking for something mm-hmm. that people want to be true, and they aren't able to provide any good evidence. So they give shitty evidence like this and say, "Could it be? Mm, is it possible? This thing? Well, I don't know if it's possible or not. Let's do some experiments. Let's fucking find <laughs> out for sure. It's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but that right? You're yeah. But yeah, it's it's ridiculous, stupid. Very what good. else do you have for us? This is from your buddy, Todd Starnes. Yeah. Uh, Chad. Uh, for eight years, the Military Religious Freedom Foundation and the Obama administration waged a relentless war on religious liberty within the ranks of the armed forces. Dude, there were so many casualties. I know. It was crazy. As, uh, this is, oh, this is written. More than the Bowling Green by Massacre. Todd yes. As I document in my forthcoming book, which I have taken the title out of, uh, nativity scenes were removed from military bases. Airmen were punished because of their religious belief, because of their religious beliefs. Oh, sure. Uh huh. And VA hospitals imposed draconian rules that even disallowed school children from disturbing Christmas, distributing Christmas cards that included the words <laughs> Merry Christmas. I'll Don't disturb those Christmas be, cards. Be interesting to keep them from disturbing Christmas cards. <laughs> <laughs> Might be harder. <laughs> the Military Religious Freedom Foundation's most recent attack came in May when they filed a federal lawsuit demanding that a World War II veteran's family Bible be removed from a missing man table at the VA Medical Center in Manchester, New Hampshire. I'm sorry. I'm in my own head now because you said something that got me thinking, like, language is fun and crazy and weird, and people can walk away from hearing the same thing and have a different understanding of it, right? Can you back up again and, and read that little bit that I got a little confused by, or... Yeah, which after the uh, disturbing Christmas cards? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so the disturbing Christmas cards, like that, could be that could be taken one of two ways, right? Like she's over there, and there are Christmas cards that are that are set somewhere, and she's disturbing them. She's moving them around, and, right? Yeah. Or it could be that there are Christmas cards that the content of the card is disturbing, right? And we need to keep kids away from those. So there's there's two different ways to look at it there. And then there's the added thing of, well, you just misspoke on accident, but you know, we could have just accident. Yeah. We could <laughs> we could have we could have just continued on and people would walk away w- from that with a completely different thing. Yes. And and go on the rest of their lives thinking that. And it's just weird to me that we have we have a tool to communicate with each other. We have a we have a way to get across our point to each other. And in trying to do that so often there is a gap. There's there's a misstep in the communication somewhere, either from the person who's speaking or the person who's receiving the message that it's interpreted in a way in which it wasn't intended, or something is said. They've they've replaced one word with with another that sounds close or or means kind of the same thing, but the other person takes it a different way. Right. And it's only through extensive dialogue back and forth can we really get to the heart of the matter and 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 figure out what somebody is trying to say about something right it's it's not these tiny little sound bites that we hear on the news mm-hmm. that we that we read other places that are wrapped up in this tidy little package that everybody can do with as they want it's 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 disingenuous it's it's harmful it's not helpful at all to to participate in those kinds of things and and to propagate and promulgate those those things all over the place when it could just be a simple misunderstanding of something so right anyway this just communication has been on my mind a lot lately because there are some things that i i'll I'll have a conversation with tracy right she'll come in and ask me a question and i know i'm i'm totally fucking up your thing here just it got me thinking but there are there are times when i'll have a conversation with somebody and it starts with a question that I don't understand even the premise for the question or why the person is asking it. And so my mind starts racing with all of these different permutations of, well, how did they arrive to where they want to start this question? They want to start a conversation with the question that they, that they did, right? Would it be more effective if they did this other thing or if they started it another way because it's put me on my back heels and I feel defensive or there's just so many different things and nuances to conversation that, that become so sloppy. And I, a lot of the time in my interpersonal communications with people on a regular day-to-day basis, I don't use flowery language and I don't, 
I don't, I'm not really verbose in a lot of my communication, especially at work. And I worry sometimes that people view me as cold or as a dick because I'm not this bubbly, effervescent person that they have seen or have talked to in person in my written communication. It's very to the point and direct. Like hmm. you ask me a question. Here's my answer. It's not going to be loaded with a bunch of extra superfluous flowery language about, Oh, hope you're doing well. Hope everything, you know, little winky emoji at the end of it. A lot of the times. Hmm. And I put those into my personal communications with people that I interact with online just because I have that worry because there's been a perception by some people that I work with that I'm a dick sometimes because I'm just, hmm. I get to the point. Like I don't, I'm, I'm very efficient at work. I want to make sure that the things I get done, get done on time and correctly. Sure. And so if somebody asks me a question, I give them a direct answer. I don't get into a lot of the nuance and background in large part because I assume that we're on the same page because we're doing the same type of job. We're just communicating and coordinating different aspects of that. And so they should know a bunch of this background, but I don't know that they do for sure. And so sometimes that gets lost and disputes arise. <laughs> right. There's, there's the one person at work that for a long time was a real challenge for me to work with because they just were kind of a terrible person and seemed to take everything I said in exactly the worst way possible. Oh, okay. And since then, that has softened a whole lot after they've interacted with me more and they're much more uh, understanding of my communication style and I'm more understanding that they have some issues with social interactions and they have some mental health issues surrounding that and some anxiety that leads them to automatically assume the worst in people, blah, 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 blah. But I don't know, language, language and communication and interpersonal relationships are just fucking fuzzy and cause more problems than they could or should if people would just more willingly, openly communicate with each other and not assume that everybody has the worst intentions in every interaction. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I just, I see that way too often where people just assume the worst of somebody else instead of giving them the benefit of the doubt. And, and then if they, if somebody sees something that is written that they could take one of two different ways, one being bad, one being good. I see we, way too many people jumping on the, well, you're just made a really shitty comment here. And it happened to me earlier this week. Somebody mentioned me in a comment on a separate thread that they were interacting with, with people arguing basically the same thing on a couple different threads. I chimed in on one of them and then in this completely separate thread, this person tagged me in a comment that in the thread it was put in was a really fucking shitty comment. But if they had put it in the other thread, it would have been perfectly fine. Hmm. So it's just, it's just a weird thing that communication is hard. Sometimes I try to do my best and try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but I don't know. It's difficult. And I've totally derailed the thing that you were talking about. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. We, we should, I th think that was interesting. And we should talk about zoning after this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. You want you to talk about zoning? <laughs> I forgot that we had that we had that. Um do you do you want to do that now? Sure. Sure? Maybe? Yes? Okay. So <laughs> fuck I'm sorry, I totally derailed that whole thing and I've just proven Tony's point. So on the most recent episode of Conversations with God, which is a fantastic show. Despite yes. what the owner and creator of it would tell you, <laughs> it's very funny. Um, it's just a short uh, little fun. I don't know if it's very funny. I, I laugh at every episode out loud <laughs> more often than not. It's pretty funny. I, I like it quite a bit. Um, but Tony is the one who, uh, is the creator for conversations with God. He's the host of the show. He's the one who has conversations with God. And on his most recent episode, he had some audio kind of promoting our show a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You think? I, I think that's what, what the goal was. And I, I think it was, uh, sort of an English attempt at, to uh, marketing. Well, let's, let's let the audience decide what they, what they think is going sure. on here. Here's, here's the clip. If you're like me, then you probably spend a lot of time listening to podcasts to help pass the time on long journeys. 
or if you're knitting a jumper, or if you're serving time in the state pen for blasphemy, or if you just want a bit of time out, take a bit of time out from uh, beating one of your slaves. Now, one of my favourite podcasts is a podcast called The Godless Revolution. It's lovely. It's three chaps, Ryan, Matt and Dan, from the United American States of the United States of America, Utah, and they're chatting, and they're chatting about all sorts of things. Now, on the outset, that might not seem like an extraordinary premise for a podcast, but when you dig a little deeper, you'll find some hidden depths to this atheist-based audio production. For example, in episode 257, the guys diligently, and with a sense of professional guile rarely seen in the podcast community, discuss retail zoning in Utah. You can hear a subtle tension between Matt, Dan and Ryan as they wax lyrical on matters of obvious deep meaning and import. Play the clip, Tony. So, so this is Dan, and this is the live bit of recorded audio now while we're sitting in studio and I'm playing you the clip from Tony's show. It's all very meta because this is from Tony's show Conversations with God, the next little bit that we'll be playing, but that is taken from one of our episodes and put into his episode and now we're talking about it on a completely separate episode. And so I just want to make sure you're not confused when you hear our voices during this next bit. So I'll continue with the audio from Tony here. Welcome to the Godless Revolution. Today is Thursday, July 11th. Yeah, a lot less foot traffic. Well, like, you know, malls and strip malls are closing all over the place. Mm-hmm. Andrew Yang has a plan for that. He uh, wants to turn them into business skate rink. Centers. Roller derby. And yeah, yeah, weird. I don't know. He's, I think well, he's got some good ideas and some other kind of wacky ideas. That's what happened to the mall that was in my hometown where I grew up. That thing closed down when I was a kid. Yeah. And that's. I think it all is all nothing but businesses now. Yeah. I remember when it's like, oh, I like that place, but I only liked it because it had an arcade in it. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of retail space that's open an and available for fairly cheap. Oh, know? yeah. But then, too, it's sometimes zoned that you can only do, like, retail sales there. So yeah. You can't it's hard use for people it for to move in there, yeah. business or office space. You yeah. have to have some sort of commerce. Yeah. Fuck me, that's incredible, Tony. A real insight from the uh, Godless Revolution team on the thorny issue of residential zoning in downtown Utah. Do you know what, God? It's moments like this when I curse myself for not thinking of it myself. Instead, I have to spend all my time conversing on this podcast with a powerless, pointless deity every single episode whose brain is like a giant fucking bubble in space full of monkey's pubic hair. Monkey's pubic hair, Tony? What manner of insult and blasphemy is that? Don't dwell on it. God, enjoy it. We get, we're, we're going off topic, Tony. Uh, where can I find more insightful discussions like retail zoning in Utah from the Godless Revolution team, Tony? Interesting you should ask that bubble-brained prick in space. If you're au fait with the internet Googles, simply Google Godless Revolution and a profusion of listening options will henceforth adorn the... What the fuck are you on about, Tony? No idea, but seriously, if you're in the market for a quality podcast, please check them out. It's much, much better than this podcast. And actually, in a more recent episode, they have a very interesting chat about traffic etiquette and lane merging, which was fascinating. (laughs) And then... Then the then the music fades, and that was the end of the clip. And he's absolutely right. We did talk about yep. we did talk about traffic and and merging and even stuff. if it was a cut, kind of weird. <laughs> we did we did talk about that. I think that's I think that's very hilarious. Thank you, Tony. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you should all go check out Conversations with God. It's it's a fun show. I like it. It's short. It's like twenty minutes per episode, and I think he releases uh, like every other week. So it's not going to be a huge add to your podcast list as far as uh, time that you'll need to spend listening to it, but you'll enjoy every minute of it, th- I think. I, I really enjoy yeah. it. It's a fun show. Yeah. So, back to what Todd Starnes is on. <laughs> yeah, Jeez, I'm sorry. Todd Starnes is on about. Todd Starnes. Todd Starnes. Uh, after the disturbing Christmas cards, he's talking about the Military Religious Freedom Foundation and our friends there. Uh, most recent attack came in May when they We're filed do an a, attack <laughs> when they filed a federal lawsuit demanding that a World War II veteran's family Bible be removed from a missing man table at the VA 
uh, Medical Center in Manchester, New Hampshire. If you don't know, Missing Man Table is also called a Fallen Comrade Table. It's a ceremony and memorial that's set up in military dining facilities of the U.S. Armed Forces and uh, during official dining functions in honor of the fallen, missing, or imprisoned military service members. Hmm. So they just leave an empty table that's all dressed up or whatever for missing servicemen. Yeah, so other people yeah. keep them in their mind. Right, and, yeah. right. Um, Herman Streitberger, who is an American, hmm. uh, and recently turned 100 years old, was captured by German fighters in 1944 and held as a prisoner of war. Mr. Streitberger donated his family Bible to the table honoring missing military personnel and prisoners of war. But the MRFF claims the inclusion of the World War II veterans Bible on the missing man table is a violation of the U.S. Constitution. I would say that it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it sucks that it has to be under these conditions, but a violation is a violation, right? I mean, you, 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 you give them an inch, though. Yeah. You know, and that's the problem. Yeah, that's that's why we're supposed to maintain a strict separation yeah. of religion and government. Not just, you know, a, a squishy separation where we don't want you to actually set up a church in our in our government. Like, we don't want you to do that. But, you know, some commingling can exist because then it just leads to all kinds of other problems. Yep. It leads to, to people feeling left out. It leads to squishiness. It leads to... People, you know, you give them an inch, they take a mile. Yeah, it's like just, Jason Rapert. Yeah, if we if we make a a distinct, strict separation between government and religion, then the, we hopefully won't have to run into issues like this very often. Yep. Uh, this was not the first time that the M- MRFF made such an accusation, and more often than not, more often than not, VA hospitals capitulated to their demands, even without putting up a fight. On Wednesday, the Trump administration dispatched Vice President Mike Pence to tell the nation it was time to fight back. Quote, we will always respect the freedom of religion in every vet- of every veteran of every faith. That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, uh, because they clearly so don't. Mike, yeah, and the, re- and the reason why they're coming out for this one is because it's a Bible. Right, because it's a Christian. Yeah. And my message to the New Hampshire VA hospital is the Bible stays, says Pence. The vice president affirmed what I have been reporting for over a decade now at Fox News. The Obama administration was no friend to people of faith. Don't know why he sticks that in there. Not really too relevant to the story, but. Got to throw in a dig at the black guy. Yep. It's real. Uh, quote, it's really no surprise because under the last. Admi- oh, that's why. Under the last administration, VA hospitals were remo- removing Bibles and even banning Christmas carols in an effort to be politically correct, Pence said. The vice president vowed that the Trump administration would always respect the freedom of religion of every veteran of every faith. Oh, said that again. God damn it. (laughs) It's like I don't even read these before I come to the show, (laughs) but I do. But it's like I don't. Quote, but let me be clear. Under this administration, VA hospitals will not be religious religion free zones, Pence said. Mikey Weinstein, the founder of the MRFF, was enraged at the vice president's remarks. Quote, Mike Mike Pence is one of the most repulsive and repellent fundamentalist Christian supremacists and bullies on the scene today, he said in a prepared statement. It's hardly surprising that he is leading his ugly bigotry and pervasive prejudice in support, lending his support, of keeping that Christian Bible bolted down on that POW MIA table. Would they welcome a Quran there? Would they welcome a satanic Bible there? I'm sure not. I mean, are all yeah. faiths welcome? If, if we, if we don't, you know, if we want to, as Mike Pence and Todd Starnes would say, if we want to defend religious liberty and freedom, then shouldn't people of all faiths, right, all religions be welcome at the table? Mm-hmm. Shouldn't all of those beliefs be welcome, regardless of whether you personally disagree with that person of another faith? I would think. Yep. Seems seems like it should be, but it's clearly not. It's clearly not. VA Secretary Robert Wilkie said, It's offensive to me that we send our troops into the most godforsaken places on the planet, and yet we have people suing us because they're offended by the presence of a Bible at the table memorializing miss- missing soldiers. It's interesting that he would choose to use the word godforsaken. Hmm. In oh, this, course, in this yeah. case, you know, well, he's going to load, he's going to load up his, his 
comments and conversation with as much religious nonsense as he can because no, but that's I mean, what he's trying to promote. Even saying that though is just saying that even even God has forgotten about these places. Oh, I get you. Yeah. Yeah. We send we send them to these places without God. Yeah. So and why has why has God forsaken them? Right. I mean, here in the U.S., we hear the Christians say that God has forsaken us on so many different points, and it's because of the abortion gays and whatever, abortion yeah. and trans rights and all of these wicked things that the Christians say we're doing, and and so God has forsaken us, and that's why you know people can walk into churches now and shoot them up. And we took yeah. prayer out of schools. We're we're banning Bibles from places, and so God's really upset about that, but. What about these other places that were really religious? Yeah. Um, he finishes by saying that people of all faiths, especially Christians, owe the Trump White House a debt of gratitude for defending religious liberty liberty, and rolling back the strong anti-Christian sentiment that took root during the previous administration. Especially Christians the should be The strong anti-Christian sentiment that took root during the previous administration. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yeah, a lot of lot of really strong anti-Christian. Fuck, fuck you, Todd Starnes. Mm -hmm. You stupid asshole. He is a stupid asshole. Hey, everybody! I'm Mary, and I'm Shelly. We have the Latter Day Lesbian Podcast. It's the podcast about an ex Mormon gay girl just trying to figure out her life, mm -hmm. and so we do that every week on a podcast, don't we? We do. You're supposed to jump in. Sorry, just jump in any time. Okay. <laughs> I'm here. We are available on your favorite podcast app. Just uh, look for Latter-day Lesbian, where your favorite podcast can be heard. And you're listening to The Godless Revolution. I'm, I'm not really sure what you're saying, son. I'm saying, if there is some geezer up there with a big white beard, he's a wound heavyweight cunt. I, I'm sorry, did you just call God a C-word? Yeah, he's got a hard-on for mass murder and giving kids cancer. And his big old answer to the existential clusterfuck that is humanity... It's to nail his own bleeding son to a plane. That is a cunt move. Come on, even you got to agree hey, with me. Hey, 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 please. We should lob a fucking nuke at him. Sir. Get it over and done with. You know what I'm saying? We're sorry, sir. We apologize. My man. All right, good talk. Think about it. I'm here all day, all right? You mind piping it down just a little bit? Oh, huh? I'm sorry. Didn't mean to offend you. are in the Black Baptist mum shouting praise the Lord. Fuck you. I'm Episcopalian. And it's nothing wrong with having a little church up in you, you know? Said the bishop to the nun. If you have questions, comments, concerns, compliments, corrections, criticisms, or concepts for content, contact the show via email at godlessrevolution at gmail.com, by text or voicemail at 330-81-REBEL, or Twitter the twatter at TGR Podcast. Thank you! All right, the last thing on the agenda for this evening is to talk about this, this woman, Anne Graham Lotz. She's the daughter of famed evangelist Billy Graham. This comes to us from Dead State, which in turn pulled it from Right Wing Watch. Uh, she was recently on a show with Steve Deese. He's a right wing pundit who has his own podcast. Uh, I've seen him on the weekend shows as we were, we listened to a little bit of this, uh, before we're playing it for you now. And I recognized his voice. And so I ran a quick search for him because the voice hit me as somebody who I've seen on weekend shows and on other news programs that I watch. And he's a giant dick. So I wanted to see if that was indeed the person I thought it was. And it is. So. Um, but this is pretty interesting. This is, this is, like I said, she's the daughter of Billy Graham and the things that she says are gobsmacking. You go, you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is, this is pretty amazing. She said that, uh, she hopes that some of this craziness would settle down in the U S which according to her seems to be shaking its fist in God's face and telling him to get out of our politics, get out of our schools, get out of our businesses, get out of our marketplace, get off the streets. I don't want to, I don't want to repeat her words more often than I have to, so let's just get straight to the audio, shall we? In our nation, one of the things that, you know, I think we pray for is that some of this craziness would, um, settle down and our defiance of God would, um, that we would be, uh, uh deeply repentant and humbled so that our nation, which is, seems to be shaking its fist in God's face and telling him to get out of our, politics get out of our schools get out of our businesses get out of the marketplace get off the street you know just uh it's just a stunning to me the way we are um basically abandoning god as a culture and as a nation because when when we do that then god the bible says god abandons us and he backs away and and takes his hand a favor blessing 
um, his hand of protection away from us, um, and he abandons us. <clears throat> so God is a petty fucking tyrant, is what she's saying there. Yep. He's and a petty fucking tyrant who will take away his blessings from us if if we don't like him. That doesn't sound like a perfect being to me. No, and he and he expects people to be not only gullible but also pathetic and groveling and helpless and yeah, yeah. to to be abject uh, yeah slaves yeah yeah to to fully submit themselves to him mm -hmm. that doesn't sound like a perfect being a no. perfect being would have no needs wants or desires right? right they would be perfect there would be nothing that they needed nothing that they wanted nothing that they yearned for nothing they wanted to create a perfect being wouldn't create anything because it could not create anything that was not perfect. It would not be capable of making anything imperfect, right? Mm -hmm. As a perfect being, that's all you can do and create is perfection, right? Would you, would you, as a perfect being, it's kind of like the, can God create a burrito so hot he can't eat it? Or can he mm -hmm. make a rock so big he can't move it? It's one of those things where, Saying that God is perfect is is illogical if you want to also say that that God created us and and the, the universe and everything else hmm. because it's imperfect. An imperfect thing can only come from something that isn't perfect. If it is perfect, it would have no need to create it in the first place. And if it did create it, it couldn't create anything but perfection because that thing is perfect itself. It couldn't do anything other than to create other things of perfection. But it would have no need to do that. It would have no desire to do that. Because it's perfect. It would have no wants. It would have nothing. It would have no desires. There would be nothing. It's a perfect, perfect being. So the, the hope is that when we cry out to him and in deep repentance and humility and, and asking, just say, God, we're sorry. You know, we're asking you to come back. W would you return to us? Would you once again bless us? Then I think there would be peace in our street, on our streets and there would be, um, in our leadership, a caring about what's best for the nation instead of their own um, agendas. I think he would begin to reveal the plots of our enemies and terrorists before they are um, carried out. You know, there are all sorts of ways, even the weather patterns. You know, he he can even control the weather patterns and protect us from these violent uh, storms that are taking human life. And so there, there are many different ways that he can answer prayer. Um, and so we won't know until we pray. So she's saying that God could protect us from all of these things, but he's not. No. And he's not because we have to beg him first. Yeah. He, 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 if we don't, if we don't beg him properly, he'll just watch the destruction and, and want everybody else to witness the destruction and go, see, this is what you get, people. Yep. You don't do what I want. I'm going to fuck you up. Mm -hmm. Don't do what God wants. Um, God will fuck you up. Sounds like. God's an asshole. God's a monster. Yeah. I'm fond of, and I don't know if it's good, I just like saying it, so I hope it is, but uh, I, I have said many times, Ann, that knowing God's will is easy, uh, or is simple, but it's not easy. I mean, what you're describing is very simple. Um, this is, And God tries to keep things simple. It doesn't get much simpler than I want to be known to the point that I will become one of you so that you can know me as a, as one of you, as God among us, Emmanuel, God dwells with us. I will even come and dwell in you later. I'll put my spirit in you. That's how much I want to be in communion with you. So, I mean, that makes things pretty simple, but it's not that easy. I mean, the prayer you're describing seems simple enough. What is wrong with the human heart, however, that it's just not easy? And why would God have any desire to commune with us? Yeah. He created us. He knows what we're going to do according yeah. to them, right? He has knowledge of everything that has existed or ever will exist, everything that is yet to occur, everything that has occurred. Yeah, he would have known everything before before he even created anything. Yeah, it's it's nonsense. I mean, it just it's wouldn't even They've made an illogical superhero. Yep. I think it's not easy necessarily because we don't think we really need it. And so we're struggling with our own pride or, you know, self-sufficiency. Um, and I think that's why God allows bad things to happen. I think that's why he would allow a 9-11 to happen or some of these other, you know, the dreadful attack in San Bernardino or some of these other places to show us that we need him. You know, we're desperate without him. 
And then when you're desperate and you cry out to him, that's not hard. What, what's hard is to try to, you know, start from scratch and try to work yourself up to that, <laughs> which is why he lets us have situations where it's, it's just, it would be hard not to cry out to him. So, um, you know, the, the cry out to God when you, when you need him is something that I believe almost is natural in the human spirit because we're created by God and for God. And I think our hearts turn to God in, in a hard place. So she's just said that God is a domestic abuser, basically. Yeah. It's an abusive relationship. If you don't do what I want you to do exactly as I want you to do it, I'm going to fuck you up. Mm -hmm. And she wants to beg that person or that being for forgiveness. Not only does she want to beg it for forgiveness, she worships that being. That's a fucking monster. She worships a monster. She just told us that he's a fucking monster. Well, and if she doesn't, she's going to be in trouble even further farther. <laughs> <laughs> so in more she's deeper. Kind of got to. In, she'll be in even more deeperness. Yeah. She's got to be twisting herself into knots that it's a perfect being who just loves us. God is love. Right. Is a fucking lie, according to what she just said here. If God is love... He would not allow. Well, he loves us enough to help if we ask him first. I'll love you so much that I'm going to fucking torture you forever unless you do yeah. what I say. Yeah. Yeah. That's how much I love you, that I would torture you forever, for infinity, for a finite crime, for a simple transgression against me. I will torture you for infinity. Maybe it was more like the, maybe it's just that because the word was being used, it's been misinterpreted by humans. Maybe it was like, you know, in the Bible when they're doing it or whatever, they're trying to relate the stories and it's like, God is hitting you, you know? And then he's like, you know, I love you. Don't you, baby? You know, I love you, baby. Whack, whack, whack. Stop you know? hitting yourself. Stop hitting <laughs> yourself. You know how they do that? They go back and forth like that. <laughs> yeah. And so then some people have just interpreted that as God loves us, you know? That's, that's a pretty twisted take on love, man. That's, that's sad that that people would believe that that's what love is. Yeah. Well, a lot of people do. Yeah. Well, and maybe their Christian upbringing has something to do with that because they've been uh -huh. taught that, yeah, abuse, abuse can be love. That, that's what it means. Right. Abuse can be love. I mean, yeah. God is perfect and he abuses people all the time. Right. And, and he is love. God is the definition of love. That's where love comes from. Yeah. Wow. Sad, pathetic, awful. Mm -hmm. That'll wrap things up for us this evening because I have shit to go do. I'm going to go see it too. We Tracy hates scary movies, so I'm going with her mother. <laughs> going with her mother and her brother to go see it too. That'll be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm running a bit behind. I need to go pick them up, so we're going to end the show now. Uh, before we go, though, I want to make sure that we thank our Patreon supporters. These are the people for whom you should be very thankful. Yeah. Because they keep you away from having to hear a bunch of crappy adverti advertisements. Advertisements. Derbing our bishoby. <laughs> anyway, uh, our Patreon supporters are Alan Firth. New Mania. Christy Kalbach. Gatheus. Steven Andrus. Let them eat cafefe. Two Skeptical Chaps. Vanessa. Don't be a Richard. Utah Outcast. Wes Aaron. Andrew Vodapich. <laughs> Jeremy Goodson. Brandy Hamrick. Megan Kennedy. The Foz. Uh, Jesse Pointer. Bobby Digital, Freethinker215, and Principal Skinner Support Center for Inquiry, Janet Uter, Savita Kuna, Taylor Grin, Purple Dragon, Captain Samples, and Corey and Ebert. Thank you all very, very much. We appreciate you more than you know. Our audience appreciates you as well. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash godlessrevolution, where you can contribute as little as a dollar per episode mm -hmm. to bring you fantastic things. And Patreon supporters get things like... Every week they get the episode before anybody else. Uh, every now and then I also throw in extended outtakes. We throw in uh, extended versions of the show. We have bonus episodes every now and then. So, yeah, you should you should go and do that if you would like to and can. And we are still going to be giving all of the proceeds from this show and the last two shows and the shows before that, everything through the end of the year to Brandy Hamrick, uh, who has been a longtime supporter of the show. So. Go out and help if you can. I will also put, I will also put a link to Brandy's GoFundMe page again in 
the show notes for this episode and for every episode until the end of the year uh, so that you can all go support her and and help her just pay for all of the bills that she's going to have because our healthcare system here fucking sucks. Yep. So thank you all very much. Until next week, crucify Ted Cruz. <laughs> Crucify. <laughs> Crucify. Ted, Ted Cruz. Crucify. <laughs> Leave a review to achieve gun seizure and uh, rate the show five times a day towards zoning laws. <laughs> God damn it. Now I've got to edit this shit.